Those of you who may remember Herbert Broom, uh, he was a, uh, listening was one of the things he really pushed, advocated for. And I was talking with him once, and he was a little concerned, he expressed a little concern that I wasn't, you know, sort of speaking up enough. And, uh, Just imagine that. I did talking, and I asked him, I said, look, uh, no, I'm very interested in how you can use how you can use silence in an interaction with others. And his response was, you know, that you, as long as you're listening and you make it a demand. So what he didn't want was sort of sitting in the background listening, but making sure that those who you are interacting with know that you're sitting in the background mm. and listen. So uh, that's the thing that occurred to me. If you have any questions, great presentation. Thank you. I know that Pauline Oliveros uh, talked at one of the ASC conferences, and I was reminded of that by Jude Stone last evening. Thank you, Jude. Deep listening is a way of being. I'm a musician, I was a, I'm a violinist and a musicologist, and listening for me is not only just opening yourself, but suspending yourself. Because when I am really listening to you, to you Larry, to others, I have to stop myself from thinking, and I also have to be willing to forget what I was about to say. So I have to find it unimportant enough to be willing to forget it, and then to come up and stand here and say, you know, I forgot what I to say. So the thing about silence and intention, Pauline Oliveros, who I never had the pleasure of meeting, but I worked with her scores and ideas a lot, mm -hmm. um, she did these sonic meditation exercises. And she did them, started them in the 1970s. I'm sure I'm telling many of you things you know, but she started them in the 1970s in California. Uh, with a group of women, and they met, I think, every week at least. And she writes that that was very important, that they met all the time, so that they were there together. And some of those listening exercises were about sharing a message without making sound. So telepathy was a part of that exercise. Um, so I often take that as an exercise with silence and, a, silence and sound at the same time. And in music, often there's a distinction between those things, but we can sort of play those. And I think she did. So that we sounded with intention in silence. And what I get from that is that listening is not just so much about our auditory capacities, but with our whole bodies and also with our whole hearts and our spirits and our environment.